A's in the news, I guess, if you want to say it that way. Um, but it hasn't been good for the Oakland folks. Um, so last week it was reported, uh, Zenny had uh, made much mention of it as well as uh, a few others. But uh, Zenny went through and uh, named names. Uh, there are, I believe, uh, five or six people uh, who were registered as lobbyists in Nevada um, representing the A's, one of them being Dave Cavill um, and, a, and a few others. Um, so that wasn't great. Um, and then Rob Manfred uh, said, I believe it was today, uh, that the A's have shifted their focus to Nevada, to Las Vegas. Um, this is not good. Um, I was hoping that the quiet that, that we've been experiencing was because there's been good things uh, or no movement at least in, in, in Las Vegas, but um, you know, Mayor, Mayor Tao said, you know, things look good, but who, I, I don't know who to believe at this point, but you know, with this recent move for, uh, by the A's for lobbyists makes me sound like makes it sound like they're they're really uh, going to start plugging away at trying to find uh, public funding um, through whatever means that is uh, in in Nevada and it, it doesn't work well for us here in, in Oakland. We're hoping to keep the A's. Um, you know, I I have some reservations about all this. I'm there's the high school team over here uh, practicing. A lot of balls keep dropping to uh, right field foul I'm trying to get away from it all as well as there's a couple kids that uh, I don't want to get in the video they're little kids um, anyways uh, so I had always had like the the um, the inkling that hey you know the A's are just doing somebody else's leg work uh, in, the, in Las Vegas for an expansion team you know, and then I got to thinking about it even more, and uh, we we talked about this uh, briefly. See this? Try not to get run over here <laughs> uh, during the uh, election coverage about what happens if the A's go to Las Vegas. And yeah, see, there's another one. Uh, what happens if the A's do go to Las Vegas? What happens to Oakland? Um, because. Rob Manfred has said numerous times that once uh, Tampa Bay and Oakland get settled uh, stadium-wise, um, or in this team, uh, in, in this case, relocation uh, being an option for probably both teams, um, but it seems more likely for Oakland. Um, if, if expansion is happening, where does that leave Oakland? Who becomes that that next expansion city if las vegas gets it because it seems to be a foregone conclusion that las vegas is the obvious choice for expansion um and the the rumblings are you know uh that uh, uh dave stewart and his group are are looking at uh forming the nashville stars um i don't know how that works when you have the same name as another team in another organ, uh, organization, I guess, because there's the Dallas Stars. Uh, I don't know if you can just call yourself the Stars. I don't know how that works. Anyways, uh, neither here nor there. Um, so let's say, for instance, that Las Vegas gets the A's. Uh, that takes an expansion team out of the picture. So. Who becomes the next expansion city? Um, does Oakland automatically have a shot? Because Oakland seems to be doing what it can to, to make this happen. It's the ownership that's been lame. They've been cheapskates. They've not wanted to spend the money. They, want to, they have these big dreams, but they don't want to spend the dollars to get there. You know, everybody seems to be looking for this handout for, for public money. It's not going to happen here. And maybe because it's not going to happen here, maybe that means no sports come to Oakland ever again. You know, uh, it's been said over and over again that once if the A's leave, 
that Oakland is dead as a sports town, which is sad because Oakland has always been a great sports town. The A's, the Warriors, the Raiders were always well supported here, even in losing efforts. For years, the Warriors were terrible, absolutely terrible, and that was a packed house every game. The Raiders enjoyed similar success. Not always. Uh, it was it was rough and, and sometimes, but I remember going to a pack house, you know, uh, 0 and 10. You know, uh, they had support. They've always had support. Um, you know, and the A's had it at one point too. But this ownership group has run that into the ground. There's there's so many people that I've talked to who don't come to games because they know this team's gonna just fold in another year. This team is gonna, these guys are getting traded. These guys are on their way out. These guys are on their last leg. This guy's injured, should never have played again. You know, those sort of things. Uh, we'll never get a, you know, a rookie guy, you know, to stay much more than, you know, a couple years because he's gonna get big money somewhere else and we're not gonna pay it. Um, and so they don't come to games and then, you know, the area around there is terrible. My car was broken into three times this last year, um, including the last game of the season. Uh, you know, nobody wants to go there. It's, it's, it's uh, the parking's more expensive than the game ticket. Um, you know, the, the Coliseum's falling apart. Uh, you know, it seemed like things were on the up and up. And, uh, you know, in the upward trajectory, uh, you, you know, not up and up, but a little bit of both. Um, you know, a couple years ago when Cavill came in and, uh, you know, they started re making small renovations just to keep things fresh. And then it all just dropped off. No more money. You know, um, you know it seemed like they really had something going and then uh, it all just fell apart. But, you know, if, if, if I was running shit, I'd say... Oakland, Oakland gets a shot at another team. And the people I do talk to in Las Vegas, and I do talk to quite a few, I have family there, and I have... Uh, you know, there's people there I talk to, and they don't want another Raiders situation. They want to pay the taxes on, on all this, this public money that they supposedly will get. They don't want another team to just come from somewhere else they want their own thing. They don't want, they want another expansion team. They, or if you're gonna get the A's, they gotta rebrand. They, they don't want the A's, you know? Uh, it, it's a hard pill for some people to swallow. You know, um, there are some A's fans, and of course those guys want the A's, um, but most of them don't want somebody else to come in and, and be the same old thing that was somewhere else. Um, unfortunately, you're gonna get that whether you get the A's by name or not, because you're going to get John Fisher, who's been, quite frankly, a shitty fucking owner. He's been an absolute deadbeat of an owner. Uh, how they don't force him to sell in the first place, I don't even know. We should have never been in this situation to begin with. Um, there are billionaires out there who are chopping at the bit to buy the team. Uh, Joe Lacob said he wants it. Um, you know, uh, he might take a stab at the Angels. Who knows? Uh, so, uh, yeah, a lot of opportunities for, for billionaires out there if when they come up. And I don't think he's the only one. Um, I remember Larry Ellison's name being thrown around a few years back. Um, you know, the, the Bay Area is full of billionaires. Uh, hell, even Elon Musk could run shit better than oh what's his face we don't even know you know uh, a lot of people don't like him I don't care what you feel about him would he be a better owner just because you don't like uh, Tesla or Twitter or what he's been doing lately he's I feel like his uh, his whole thing with the uh, you know with Twitter and stuff have been a uh, a game <laughs> uh, I think he's trolling the right honestly to get them to uh, dump their gas vehicles and buy electric cars but whatever, I don't know. I'm, I'm making up stuff at that point. That's just uh, me playing what if. But um, yeah, but what if there are better owners out there who could take this team in a different direction? A storied team, you know. Now, why not 
have John Fisher sell the A's, take his money, expand into Las Vegas, leave the A's here to somebody else who will take care of it. Uh, you know, a, a team that, you know, is a storied franchise through multiple cities, and I would hate to make it another one, but uh, Fisher has not respected that. Not at all. You know, I think I'm like in the middle of a bike path. I didn't realize it was there. Um, you know, John Fisher has, has neglected this team at every level. Uh, neglected the players, neglect, neglected the fans. Um, hell, he's even neglected the entire league. He's, he's collecting welfare, you know, just, just, just to stay afloat. You know, um, it's not okay. Again, if I, if I was running the show, I'd have him sell it. And he can, if he wants to continue to own a baseball team, one, he'd have to agree to be spending the money. Um, and then, you know, he could expand Las Vegas, sell the rate, sell the uh, A's to somebody who's going to take care of them. And uh, everybody gets something. But, I mean, I don't see Portland as a better sports town than Oakland. I don't see Vancouver as a better sports town than Oakland. I don't see Salt Lake City or Des Moines or anywhere else with the, with one exception. Uh, there's there's one one place that I'm like, why haven't MLB expanded there? And that's Mexico City. Mexico City would be a badass place for MLB to expand to. They have their own issues though. Lots of uh, they have their own crime problem, uh, corruption. Um, that sort of thing, but you would also have kind of a built-in audience. You got a city that's like two to three times larger than Manhattan, like population-wise. I think they got like 25, 30 million people in Mexico City. I mean, that's huge. That's the biggest market in the Western Hemisphere. <laughs> like, where else are you going to put anybody? You know, um, it would be smart. Uh, you, there's so many ways you can run it. Hell, you could probably put two or three teams in Mexico easily, but Mexico City makes the most sense. But um, I guess that's for another day. Uh, but yeah, this doesn't make sense to me. Because if the money is that good in Las Vegas, yeah, sure, I, I see why a team would go there. But why would you limit yourself um, by using an old name uh, that nobody really cares for there? You know, why not do something that's original and rebrand your team? Uh, also, on but on the other end, I can also see the fact that the A's are worth more as the A's. Um, now, that could be worth more as the A's selling it to somebody else. If that's your intention in the first place, is to sell the team. If, hopefully, I didn't just lose you on a, on a phone call. Uh, but if your intention is to sell the team, yeah, you want to get the most value out of it. But if your intention is to just pop up somewhere else and then see what happens, I don't know. You can end up losing money. We already see what the Razors have done uh, as far as uh, no home field advantage. Not that the A's really have a home field advantage lately either. I go to the Coliseum, places packed with Yankees fans and Boston fans and you name it. Um, but you're definitely going to get that there. Are you saying that the A's would move to Vegas and then he would sell the team or he would sell the team and then the new owner would move to Vegas? Because two different things and both are plausible. Um, but I think, uh, I think the A's aren't worth as much right away in... Yeah, that's a stupid idea though, honestly. You're gonna take the team and you're gonna, you're gonna move them somewhere and then hopefully you'll have uh, the investment from someone else. Now, let's say the A's do move, and they're talking about moving to a smaller, cheaper ballpark than what they would do at Howard Terminal, with probably, uh, at least from what I've seen, uh, with probably a smaller project. Now, a project in Oakland could be worth a lot more. First off, we're talking real estate. Real estate's worth more in Oakland and in the Bay Area and California in general. Yeah, sure, they run the numbers every day, but we also see what's going on in Las Vegas. 
the Raiders aren't doing as well as everybody says they are, you know. Um, and NFL isn't MLB. Running eight games, ten games a year in your home city is not running 81 plus games. It's way different, very different. Um, I don't, I don't know if they can. Um, you know, even even the Raiders aren't filling their own stadium. Yeah, I mean, well, their history with MLB is minor league baseball. You know, and saying that you can that they're they're selling out a uh, their minor league stadium. Yeah, it's it's ten. I think it's ten thousand people, roughly, is is their capacity. That's not bad, honestly. It's not. Summerlin's actually a nicer part of Vegas. I'd like it way better than the Strip. Um, I'd rather go see a game there than down uh, on the Las Vegas Boulevard. Not so sure the numbers work out in Oakland. HB. Eh. You are probably underestimating the value of Howard Terminal and the property there and what it would mean for the A's. Um, I, I think this is a bad move for the A's. And uh, if he thinks he's going to, he might get more money for the team. I'll give you that. He might get more money for the team itself. But all the other stuff, when you include a stadium and the 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 other benefits of, I run a. Well, okay, you don't have Oakland numbers, but that, that's great. When you take a look at a twelve billion dollar project versus what you're going to get from uh, a project in, in Nevada, which he's only talking about, only building a ballpark with some small development nearby. He's not getting all that money. Not in Las Vegas. So if you could sell the team for just the team for, uh, uh, you know, three or four billion dollars right now. I mean, is that better than uh, building a stadium and still only getting about that much? Or would you build the bigger project that's going to make more money over time um, as well as when you sell it? Um, I, I think the better investment is Howard Terminal. $12 billion? That's a lot of money. Um, and we're not just talking apartments and condos. Um, it's not the politics that seem to be in the way of the Oakland A's staying in Oakland. It seems to be John Fisher. They've gone and got way more money than they ever said they would get. Over $300 million right now, and they're still working on more. And that's what's out that mega grant that they didn't get. Who knows what else they'll get? Um, they were only asking for uh, like, you know, 150 or 200 million a couple years ago. Well, the low cost housing isn't really the hit that they think it is. Um, but there's more to it than that. Uh, it, it will help a blighted part of the city. Um, you know, if they would just sit down with like the, uh, the truckers and stuff, they could probably work out a better deal, honestly. You know, that's my kind of my, my gripe too, is uh, you got the port who's, who's really been instrumental in um, slowing this down not the politicians most of the politicians seem to be on board as long as it makes financial sense as long as it's not coming out of the general fund and falling back on taxpayers they've always said it and that's where it's at well <laughs> he's made his money already i mean i don't shop at gap anyways you know it's uh I, honestly i don't see how they're still in business um but uh you know, he gets, he gets his money. He's made his money. Really, he's made his money. He bought the team for, uh, I forget what the dip, the, money, the number was, $400 million? Maybe not even that, you know. And, and now it's worth upwards of $4 billion. And that's when they suck. And they can't put an ass in the seat. You know, how much are they worth, you know, uh, with a competitive team? You know, there's a lot. Hey, Vegas has a lot going for it. I'm not, I'm not going to lie about that. Um, I just don't think this makes sense for 
MLB. Because if, you, if you're looking at expanding to a city, that means now you're gonna take a number out. You know, uh, um, so where are you going to expand to if you expand to your expansion city? You know, do you stay in Oakland? Low-income housing is a big hit if you can't get a development done without building low-income housing. They don't have to build the low-income housing at Howard Terminal. They can actually build it off-site or just spend a bunch of money to offset the offset the uh, the housing. So it, it, they kind of get their money either way. Plus the way that the the, the financing structuring works for the uh, the IFD. Um, there's there's money to be made. There's there's still other money that they could be pulling from other places. Uh, Zenny's gone over it a few times with. Uh, other uh, 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 shit, tax increment financing uh, that could be done here and, and that they haven't done. And, uh, you know, and Zenny's made a few really good points, you know, where's, where's like a commission or whatever to get shit done here? Like, why, why haven't, um, I don't know what she's, honestly, Tao doesn't get to make any really any deals um this is all really going to be the council who who's going to uh, make the demands were approved and there's already like again three options they can go with uh on-site low-income housing uh they can build off-site in low-income housing or they can pay into a fund for low-income housing and not build shit at all <laughs> just spend the money and just give it to the city uh that's really what it comes down to um but are they going to get that kind of money out of Nevada you know everybody everybody keeps talking about how there's all this money but it's like there doesn't seem to be anyone really wanting to deal with John Fisher there if economy hits a soft spot for a couple years that Oakland might be uh, Oakland is weathered the storm more often than not by uh, Las Vegas has had at least five massive, massive uh, hits to their economy in just 20 years. Well, maybe it's a little over 20 years. It's because you got 9-11, you had the, uh, the, the, the market crashes, or whatever you want to call it, the, the, uh, in like 08, whatever that was, the housing market crash. I mean, you had the November, or the, yeah, whatever it was. I don't know the date that the shooter guy, uh, um, you had COVID. I mean, there's just these 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 hits that just keep coming, and Vegas is one of those places that are hit hardest by it. Um, and you know they recover eventually. I mean now they're 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 back, apparently you know doing well again. Um, but when the next shoe drops, I mean we're we're looking at going into a, a, another recession. How does that affect Las Vegas? You know. Um, it's an interesting time. Um, and I'm not saying that, honestly, the way it looks right now, if, if everything is aligned the way it is right now in the next couple months, I honestly, right now, I'm feeling like Oakland is shit to bed. Well, yeah, well, I think California's problem is water too. You know, we're, while we're doing okay right now, we're still in a drought. You know, I just drove through the state and I mean like Folsom Lake, not the capacity yet, you know. Um, you know, there's there's quite a bit of snow in Tahoe, um, but you know, how, how will that affect the reservoirs? I know there's a few reservoirs here in the Bay Area, not at capacity. Although reservoirs don't run at capacity. It's a weird thing that they do is they actually will dump water so that they're not at capacity. It's the most random thing, but it makes sense to them. I don't know what it is. I, I read about it and it still was over my head. Um, yeah, it's, it's uh, but yeah, I know Vegas has a problem with water. Um, you know, even if the A's stay here, there's probably still going to be the top place for expansion. I mean, I feel like that's what the A's are really doing there. At least it did before. Um, maybe. <laughs> I mean, you, you can't say the average is going to be 5,000, but 
I think it would be a little higher, but we're probably still under 10, which is dismal. And they're probably gonna suck. Who knows? Um, I've been surprised by, you know, their their decisions uh, and you know the hunger factor of uh, these young guys that are gonna come in and you know be playing with really, uh, you know, house money. You know, they they no expectations. Hey, I want. I, I would love for you guys to save, save them too. I mean, the thing is, is it's been so long. Why would Oakland be on the list? Because Oakland is a proven sports town. It's not a great political town. It's a proven sports town. Uh, if you caught the very beginning of this, we've supported the Raiders for a lot of years uh, with, with heavy fan attendance. Uh, decades of supporting a really shitty Warriors team. And the A's have had that support too. It's that the, the all three of them uh, decided to shun the fan. I mean, Joe Lacob, at least he moved to San Francisco. He knew the money was there. Uh, and he took some hits in the beginning, but he's, it's, it's starting to catch up. But I don't know what it will be like come two or three years from now when, you know, uh, what do they call them? The Splash Brothers, you know. that That's likely over. Oh, no. The, the Giants won't, but know who else? would like an expansion team in Oakland, everybody in LA. They don't want to see, especially the, the, the Dodgers, they don't want to see the, the, the Giants having more success. That means they can, if they can take over the entire Bay Area, that means they have, you know, more money in their pockets for uh, get going after those free agents and, and, and other things, you know. Uh, that ballpark's over 20 years old now. That's an old ballpark by MLB standards. Uh, you know, in another 10 years, they might be crying new ballpark, new ballpark in San Francisco. You know, and and the Giants were looking at leaving 20 something years ago too. You know, uh, they could have been the, the Tampa Bay Giants. Hey, I mean, I don't know how you, you get through to these owners. I mean, they're not on Twitter and they don't really care. Dave Cavill has been silent for close to a year. Well, that's what I get. Hey, Wrigley is, it's an awesome ballpark. But I mean, let's look at, let's look at some of these teams like uh, the Braves and the Rangers. These guys in the last 30 or 40 years have had multiple ballparks. I mean, uh, I think the rate uh, was it Globe, Globe Park or Globe Field. I don't remember which one it is. Um, the Dallas, whatever they call themselves. The, the Texas Rangers ballpark was only about 20 years old when they just opened up a new ballpark right across the, the parking lot. You know, the other one's a fully functional stadium. <laughs> I mean, and they still, I don't even think they've demolished it yet. I think they're playing football there now. Um, it's, it's really weird. And then I remember uh, Turner Field, and I don't know what it is now, but I, I know the Braves, uh, either in the late 80s or early 90s, had a... Uh... Yeah, the, the, the A's are, are garbage. Um, and it's only because of the, the ownership. The, this is all falls on the ownership. Everybody who keeps blaming Oakland, uh, they're... they're While Oakland is inept in a lot of ways, this all really does come down to the ownership. They chose a spot they want to build. Um, if they got this money to build $12 billion worth of crap, cough up half a bill and fix the roads and shit. Well, yeah, I mean, this is this is major leagues. I think I think you're kind of right on that. I think, I think at this point, um, Hell, he doesn't have to justify it. Actually, at this point, he does not have to justify it. Rob Manfred has already given the green light to go. Now it's him crunching the numbers in both cities and going, who's going to give me what and let's play each other against each other. Well, it, <laughs> yeah, well, that's been it. They, they have torn down this team over and over and over again. 
you know, here we are through another rebuild. We lost guys who we probably could have re-signed. They wanted to be here and we probably could have got a sweet deal out of it and contended or even won something. Uh, you know, Semyon, they, we didn't even call Semyon. Hey, you know, I don't know, have you been to the Coliseum? I mean, it's actually a fun ballpark. I've been to most of them. Um, and as old and gritty as she is, it's still fun. There's sucking the fun out of it, for sure. There definitely are. I mean, the food sucks. The food's terrible. It's it's as basic as you can get. Hot dogs and nachos. Uh, I think you can still get some pizza. Yeah, they had nine world championships. When was the last one? 89. I mean, we're coming up on a lot of years. You know, um, they, they really, they really crapped on that legacy, which is really, really the part that, that kind of gets me is why would you buy such a story team and then run it to the ground? I mean, it makes no sense. I mean, this guy is asleep at the wheel, you know, and, and there's nothing we can do to get, get him, uh, to listen. I mean, this guy won't even sit down with the city. John Fisher will not even sit down with the city. The A's, the A's were in 2002. They showed up to play. Finding in many cases, 2023, they might have. Yeah, <laughs> who knows? I mean, there are some legitimate star type players on the A's. Some of them aren't going to get a fair shake until they're gone um, because this team is so bad that nobody's going to cover them. You know, Tony Kemp. I think is an outstanding player. Outstanding. But he's not going to get the coverage that Al Tuve is going to get. Um, you know, he's got some great plays, but it's Oakland. It's a team that's not competing. Um, might not even be in the city that they're covering for much longer. And, and you know, nobody gives a shit. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Uh, nobody in the media cares and none of the fans really care. The, the the two handfuls that I could probably count on being at most games, two handfuls. You know, uh, they, that's, that's only, you know, 10 people. That's not 10,000 people or even 40,000 people. I mean, yeah, I mean, you never know. Because I've seen these teams like this just be pissed and hungry and yeah, you want to play your stats up because yeah, you, you know because you know your time is limited here. Your time is limited. You, you will either be traded off or you know become a free agent. And what are you gonna do? I mean, you can't sit here and be like, well, I was on a bad team, so my numbers suck. Um, no, you're gonna try and get something so that when time comes, you know maybe St. Louis comes knocking on your door or somewhat. You know, and that's that's what gets me is like. Oakland is just as much of a sports town, if not more than most of these places. You know, it's not that the fans can't support the teams. It's just the owners suck. Mark Davis sucked. Um, the previous owner before Joe Lacob sucked. Hell, people thought Joe Lacob sucked when he bought the team. They were boot, they booed his ass off the, uh, the court. You know, uh, the A's have had a succession of shit owners. Hey, psh, it almost happened to me. Uh, they, they got everything but that. Um, last game of, or second to the last game of last season, actually. Uh, yeah, I, my, my car got broken. They stole my battery. They stole a bunch of crap out of the car. You know, and, psh, oops. I'm like, where, where's your security? Where's the police and the sheriff that are usually on site? Where's anybody? You know, nobody. They're all asleep at the wheel, you know. But they're still worried about you sitting in the 200 section. You know, and, and, you know, like, you're, you're jumping seats to sit there. You know, like, like that's the best seat I can steal. I can sit behind home plate because there's not a damn person sitting there. Uh, why would I not go there instead of sitting in the 200s? But some call me and come up and be like, hey, where's your, where's your ticket? You know, it's ridiculous. Some of these guys are just absolutely ridiculous.
I mean, well, yeah, spam. Hey, uh, my kid apparently is trying to call me, so uh, I'm going to cut this short. It's been fun talking to you guys. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, uh, the A's, you know, start talking to Oakland again and, and start making things happen um, and stop fucking around over in Las Vegas. And pardon my French here because I'm getting a little upset. Seek down to... Yeah, nobody cared, but you know, for some reason, you got all these people who are super militant for their $15 an hour. It's like, psh, nobody cares about you. Why do you care about me? But yeah, it's their job. I get it, whatever. Uh, I do appreciate people who do a good job and do what they're supposed to be doing. Um, at the same time, I'm like, man, leave me alone. <laughs> so you, you got to weigh it. Can't have everything. But um, yeah, I, I hope Oakland really gets it going here because they're it's looking bad it's looking really bad lately and i'm not feeling good about uh, their chances of staying in oakland well you can't be sure for sure because that's just what you feel i mean but nobody knows and that's where we're stuck at is is there's no communication uh everything's quiet from everybody from from the a's ownership and dave cavill to the city uh, people aren't saying a whole lot in Las Vegas either. Um, I mean, it could go either way, but it's not feeling good right now to have Rob Manfred say, hey, their focus is on Las Vegas. I'm like, that's, that's bad news. I mean, that means that what? That they're putting more focus or all their focus is there and none of it's on Oakland. Because if that's the case, then, then Oakland's fucked. We got a mayor who's who's just coming in. We have several new council members. Uh, we got a lot of people who are just wasting their time. The fan base is actually pretty good, D Brown. It's it's they're pissed off. Just because we're not coming to the games, um, you know, it doesn't mean we're not fans. We're fans of the team. We're tired of getting screwed around by ownership group after ownership group and not just the a's but we we dealt with it with the raiders and 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 to with the uh with the warriors you mean great a new a good owner finally bought them and then they took them you know and as angry as i am about that at least that one made sense you know here's the only game in town and unless you're a sacramento kings fan which i don't understand that at all but uh and you took them to somewhere where you think you can get more money. Um, we'll see how that goes in a couple years when Steph Curry and Draymond Green and Clay Thompson and the host of other guys, but those guys mainly are too old because these guys are in their 30s now. Um, Draymond's probably gone. Um, we're, we're, we're seeing the, the, the waning years of the Splash Brothers. I mean, how does how does who how do they turn this around? Because right now, if that's the case, and they're not a championship team for another ten years, this is probably the height of their uh, their value, uh, so to speak. Um, who knows? You know, they have a couple bad years. Are they really going to be the team that draws good, uh, you know, high-end free agents? You know, uh, are they going to be a team? You know that competes um you know will they like right now they have all those guys and they're basically a 500 team if they ever if they make it and limp into the eighth spot in the playoffs they're limping i mean everybody's injured right now i mean i don't see how these guys do anything but uh uh as far as the a's go i don't even know half the guys uh they got ramon loriano he, he should be back from from uh his suspension for peds um Tony Kemp, uh, a couple guys with the last name Diaz, um, uh, 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 Shea Lang Lears, they still got him. They haven't signed him or, or traded him away yet. So that's that's something. Uh, but I don't really know anybody else on the team. Uh, uh, I, I know they, they just uh, re-signed Greg Diekman, Craig Diekman, whatever his name is, to a minor league deal today. Uh, 
But hey, pitchers and catchers are reporting that it's happening. Spring training's going down. So, uh, I mean, they still exist for now. But, man, it's going to be hard to uh, root for this team, especially if they say they're going to move. You don't expect any fans here. <laughs> yeah, that's today. Who knows what happens tomorrow? Uh, who knows what happens in July? Um, I mean, what are they trading for at this point? They're not even getting good. Getting good. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm trying to get a bubble. They're not even getting, you know, good prospects. You know, they're these, the prospects they are getting are questionable at best. It's like they're just trying to uh, sabotage this team from the inside and out. You know. What are you what are you gonna take to Las Vegas? <laughs> really? This is what you're taking? I don't know. Hey guys, I'm gonna wrap this up. Uh, I appreciate the feedback you guys are giving. You know, hey, days probably are gonna move. I, I I don't feel good about it anymore. You know, um, Oakland has to play catch up at this point. Yeah, they're gonna take nothing to Vegas and hopefully not the name either. You know, uh, hopefully they go there and become rebranded and you know, uh we could die as the last A's fans and take that to hell with us. I don't know. Um, it's just, like I said, it's, it's not a good feeling right now. It's not looking good. Um, hopefully the people in Oakland who can make things happen uh, are having that same bad feeling and uh, get a fire lit under their butt to try and make something happen here. I mean, I, I don't understand, like, how hard is it to go and find sponsors and money and and that sort of thing uh oh the thing i did want to say is like you know everybody's talking about uh um infrastructure 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 what is that well it's streets and sewers and electricity and and all that good stuff but yeah really i, I feel like it right now yeah endangered um but the people who've caused most of the damage to that part of oakland are the people who are fighting really against fixing it. And that would be the people who make up East Oakland and Oakland Stadium Alliance, of which uh, none of them are from Oakland. They're, they're an AstroTurf group. Um, but this is the SSA or the Longshoremen or any of those guys in any of those groups, uh, PMSA, PSMA, whatever they are. There's, there's a bunch of them. Do any of them contribute dollars to fixing the infrastructure that they are almost directly responsible for ruining? And that's kind of something that bugs me. Um, they are on federal land on the port. But once they leave the port, they go into city. They go onto our city roads and state maintained roads and federally maintained roads that are falling apart uh, some roads aren't even paved over there uh, some are just riddled with potholes uh, rain if it rains it floods there's homeless people everywhere do any of those guys pay into it or does this just come from the little bit of tax money that they do pay um, at the port like, where does that fit into the Oakland's budget and fixing the roads and stuff? Because, like I said, these guys are, their trucks and their trains and their ships and everything else do a lot to pollute and basically damage the area. How much do they put in? But we're asking a baseball team to come through and pay for the crap that they broke. I understand that having... You know, 30,000 people come to this little area every day, or almost every day, you know, 80 days a year, uh, over over a period of six to eight months, you know, is, uh, that's going to be a lot of wear and tear. But what about the hundreds, maybe thousands of big trucks that traverse that area 24 hours a day, seven days a week, holidays included? these uh that's a lot of damage you know where's where's the railroad people trying to keep people off of the the railroads the 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 train tracks that run right down the city that have no crossings there's no bridges and there's no fences 
you know, why are they worried about 30,000 people, but they're not worried about the hundreds of people who cross that street every day? You know, it, it seems like, it seems wishy-washy to me. It seems, I'm skeptical about it. Um, but, uh, like, yeah, why don't those guys ever pay anything? And you're asking the A's to cough up hundreds of millions of dollars. Or in this case, we're, we're going to look for the money. Why weren't we looking for that money anyways? Why did we need a ballpark to figure out where the hell are we going to get $300 million to fix this crap? And why haven't they fixed it over the years? You know, I, and why aren't we asking the other, the port companies, hey, throw in a couple bucks. We're not asking for $100 million, but throw in a couple mil. Help, let's say, help, help fund some homeless programs. Help fill some potholes. You got your own pothole crew? Because I know, like, when we, we have, uh, you know, Chevron and uh, Costco Avon and Unical and all these other refineries in the area, we make them go and pay into things for remediating their garbage, cleaning the water and the soil and the air. And we, we tax them and we fine them. Like, but we don't s seem to ask the same. And I understand that these guys are big shipping companies and really a lot of Oakland's economy runs out of the port. Um, you know, it's responsible for billions of dollars in local uh, uh, commerce, you know, uh, whether it's importing or exporting goods, um, you know, or the jobs that are directly handled there, those people live somewhere. You know, they're paying taxes in Oakland too. Um, but is, is that enough? You know, if, and do we ask this from everybody who comes around and wants to build something? Like, how much do we ask for them for infrastructure? You know, um, because I know the places where I'm seeing housing being built, I'm not seeing roads being fixed. Uh, only the private roads for those little residences, you know, are those the only sewers that are getting upgraded? You know, where does that go? I mean, and I'm, I'm, I'm asking genuinely, like, where, what does this happen? I'm like, or is it, are we only doing it to the big billionaire guy who uh, wants to move his baseball team down the road? I mean, what about the other mega billionaires who are trying to build hotels and, and shopping malls and stuff like that? You know, where, where, what do we do with that? You know, um, do we ask homeowners to do that? I, I mean, I don't think we do, other than, you know, their, their tax dollars um, that, you know, they pay for their, their property taxes and their sales taxes and such. But at what, at what point do, do uh, the big businesses shut up and put their money out there, you know? Uh, I bet if the A's would sit down with some of these port places because all the port workers and the unions and stuff are saying that the A's don't even talk to them, don't even address their concerns. And the city's not much better. Um, I wonder if they sat down with these guys, they would be able to hammer out some sort of a deal like, hey, why don't you guys throw some money in here too and we can all work together. Bright idea, right? We can all work together and, uh, and come to some sort of mutual conclusion that that benefits everybody because again if if they are correct and they well yeah I, I understand that but uh we're talking on site yeah i get it but what about the entire area around it you know places that they're not going to be you know uh that's I understand that uh, developers have to pay some sort of fees, but what about existing businesses, you know? Yeah, well, but who's gonna, who's gonna pay to fix all this other stuff? You know, you got these guys and they're, they're mad because there's this money and it might go to something um, that benefits them. And I don't, I don't understand that. Uh, anyways, hey guys, this has been almost an hour. Oh my gosh, uh, 49, almost 40, 50 minutes. Uh, I need to pick up my kid at some point. Uh, baseball practice is about over. Um, yeah, I mean, I get it. You know, on site, 
absolutely on-site costs i get but um what they're asking for the a's to do infrastructure wise is the surrounding area which is money that the that the city of oakland has honestly they've neglected they've uh they've been underfunded or whatever they put that money somewhere else not there um but it's been neglected for decades. It's really, it is the city's responsibility to pay for all that. But, you know, they're asking for somebody else to come in and, and, and step up. Uh, I mean, I get what they're doing. They want to get something, yeah, some benefit to it. But at the same time, I also understand it's like, I kind of see it as unfair. You know, it's like, wait, you're asking me to pay for you, me to pay for your renovation and upkeep like like i look at it like if i was buying a house in your neighborhood uh, i'm gonna buy my house but then the next door neighbor says well if you buy that house you have to fix my driveway and put on a new roof of my house and that's kind of the way i look at it uh, it's not very fair um but as a city who's struggling for money and has a lot of needs across the board from potholes to homeless, homeless people to underfunded schools. Uh, well, he's well, he, he's responsible for doing the development on the land that he purchases. Absolutely, and he they, they get that. We're talking about adjacent areas. You know, we're talking about, hey, we, you guys need to build uh, a thing over here and you need to fix the roads over there and hey Chinatown needs some stuff too and by the way uh, we're, we're short money over here so you guys can pay for that also and it's like it doesn't really jive well with me I mean call it what you want I, I just don't think it's uh, I don't think what it's necessarily right um, as a business person I don't think it's right to be asking me to pay for somebody else's stuff but uh, as a person who lives here uh, and sees that, hey, there is money that needs to be spent and uh, there are problems that need to be solved and there's not a lot of money uh, to do so. Uh, I mean, this is an opportunity, but I see it as a money grab by everybody. Cities trying to grab their money. Developers are trying to grab their money. Uh, so some we got to come to a meeting of the minds here. And, you know, uh, the the local community groups seem to be getting uh, their place at the table, but uh, what it sounds like uh, when you look at the press releases and such is that the, the port and those, those uh, unions and businesses aren't getting their crack. Uh, and um, again, if, I, I bet you if these guys would all sit down and hammer this crap out, done deal. You'd suddenly find some money that you didn't know you had. Um, you would stop having as much resistance. Um, you know, if you're really rooted here, be rooted here. But um, I'm not going to buy any more of the uh, stuff. Yeah, I, I, I mentioned that. So, uh, yeah. Oh, I didn't know about the stadium funding bill. But that's going to take time too, right? Because that's going to take time to have to get through the various... Uh, politicians and, and legislative branches um, and so forth um, does it go to the voters I mean I'm sure they might see some some fight back on that but I don't know I mean things seem to have stalled in Oakland so I, I don't know anymore don't know anymore and it's not looking good because I don't see them uh, really pushing anything here and uh, they've been way too quiet um, a lot of the stuff doesn't make sense to me uh, as, as a lay person and um, that's a tough part uh, and, and we're all powerless I, I don't have hundreds of million dollars yeah I, I don't have hundreds of millions of dollars to throw into the pot say hey, here get it done uh, you know I'm just a guy you know, and, and I, I hope that maybe there is a way to reach these guys and say, hey, you know, uh, let's get it done. Because the, the, the idea of them sinking the ship to make sense, um, I don't know about weeks, but they could probably get it done pretty quickly if they really want it. I think they could. 
I mean, we've seen it before. They've put a lot of stuff in motion very quickly. Uh, you know, they don't screw around there. I mean, and, and that's one of the problems with California and Oakland and everywhere else here is there's a lot of red tape. There's always a committee to form a committee uh, to create another committee. You know, it's like there's, there's everybody's got their hands in the, in the, in the pot. Um, and it, it's, it's not good. Uh, it sucks for development and, pro and progress. Uh, but I also understand that it's there for a reason and we don't want to trample on certain peoples and we want to make sure everything's nice and equitable. Well, yeah, I mean, but the thing I'm not buying, though, is the, uh, the fact that they're going to tank the team just to move. They've already got the permission to go. They've got permission to go. It's done. They've, they've already said, hey, figure it out. If it works in Oakland, great. If it doesn't, head on over to Vegas. We'll waive the relocation fee. That's money right there. You know, why wouldn't you go to Las Vegas already? Oh, we don't got to pay hundreds of millions of dollars for us to move? Eh, forget the, the money that we were, we were going to save, you know, by, by just moving, you know. Uh, you know, and they're looking at building a smaller project, you know, in, in Las Vegas. And, 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 you know, you can count on everybody else to build the stuff around you. You tank the team to save a bunch of money. Just, uh, but tanking the team doesn't stop you from doing that other thing either because you can still play broke. I mean, I think the reason they drag this out is that you're going to get that free money um, through the, the, the revenue sharing as long as they can. And then they'll make their decision once that dries up, which... I believe is the end of this next season so um or this coming season i'm sorry so you know that's gonna that's gonna dry up and then they'll make a decision i'm sure um but time is ticking we're into february today's the 15th we're more than halfway done with this month and what's next you know march is right around the corner and then april and the may and june I don't even think we're going to get to the end of the season before they figure this out. Um, especially if the wheels are moving in Las Vegas, you, you might be right. They, they might have something hammered out in just weeks or months. Well, yeah, I mean, they've, they've got time on their side, but we don't have time on our side. Yeah, there's, there's, it's, it's so much stuff here that, that's so slow, you know. And what's the process like there? I don't even know. Oh, my I got 2% on my battery. So I should probably wrap this up. We're at an hour now. Uh, my kid's waiting for me. Um, baseball practice is pretty much over. Um, so I'm going to try and keep my spirits up. Um, I'm not humming everything yet, but it's not feeling good. And then... Uh, for like the fifth time I said I'm gonna go pick up my kid <laughs> um, but yeah it's it's not feeling good right now things have stalled um, Vegas looks like they're on the fast track again boy not a good time to be an A's fan especially looking at a season that's gonna be another dismal one uh, if, if 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 we can stay under a hundred losses it'll be a small miracle so not a lot to look forward to but uh, if a losing season means keeping the team in Oakland I'll take it. All right, guys. Have a great night. Um, hope you guys had a good Valentine's Day. And uh, hopefully the news gets better sooner than later. Um, I'll be in Las Vegas for the whatever MLB weekend thing. Uh, early March. So uh, I'll definitely be doing something from there. But uh, until then, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, might, might head down to uh, Arizona if we get some time in the next week or so. But... Uh, yeah, definitely be some spring training stuff coming up. All right, guys, have a good night. Uh, this is Richard Hake with Zenny62. Please like and subscribe, and uh, let's keep this thing going. All right, have a good night.